So today's discussion is based on the opportunity that mindfulness and meditation offer us to become the observer, the observer of the self, the observer of the fluctuations and the natural um, shifting, ever shifting nature of existence, which is change. And so when we can observe this about ourselves, we can make the choice. And, and I, I use the metaphor of the wave, right? When you're being mindful, you're riding the wave. And it can be a ginormous wave, it can be a tiny wave, but you're still riding the crest of that wave. When you are caught up with these changes and basing, basing your sense of self on whether or not things stay the same, you're inside the wave. You're at the whim of the nature of the wave. And of course, this is a natural part of being human, right? We, we want our loved ones to stay close to us. We want things to, and there's nothing wrong with that desire in nature. Um, but again, this, this teaches us that there is another space to base our sense of peace on. And it's not here. It's not here. It's deep inside here. And with these mindfulness practices, we can, we can sit in that space or, and I should say, and we can also learn to make a little bit more peace with the fluctuating nature of our lives. Um, and this is not an easy practice, right? These practices are not for the faint of heart. These practices are not for the people that are looking for the easy path, right? The easy path is just to stay numb and to run away. And But how much joy can we actually find in life when we're in an avoidant kind of space? So it's a matter of learning to observe the changes and, and um, recognize within ourselves, okay, we are, like, like Mary was saying, she, um, she had a great day. She's having a great day today. And she wants to ride that kind of wave. But when that wave changes, okay, I don't need to base my sense of fulfillment or self-worth on the fact that this has changed because life will change. Um, I am in the stage of perimenopause and I'm realizing I'm going through a lot of the same kind of, just to get personal with you guys, I hope you're okay with that. I'm going through a lot of the same kind of hormonal roller coasters as I did as a teenage girl. And I, I'm already an emotional person. And to admit that I'm not going to know how I'm going to feel from one day to the next is not easy. But I do my best to try to come back to the practices and say, okay, today I have that brain fog. Today my energy is going to be pretty down in the dumps. But I can be compassionate with myself and do the best I can with what I'm feeling today and not beat myself up and not think I'm doing something wrong and not feel like I'm, there's something wrong with my body or myself or my mind. This is where I am right now. Um, same thing within our lives, right? Sometimes we experience financial comfort. Other times it's financial struggle. We experience health. We experience sickness. And in those spaces of health and abundance, thank you so much. This feels wonderful. But when those things fall away, okay, this is the nature of life. And I'm going to be compassionate in this difficult time. And I'm also going to try to dig deeper into that space where I can find a sense of fulfillment and peace beyond these external circumstances. And, and I want to add to that a little nuance. Um, this is not encouraging, ignoring challenging emotions or mental states either, because they're all valid and important aspects of the human ex experience. Um, if we are constantly trying to stay in a state of happiness, then we are also negate, and, and, and there's a difference, right, between the internal peace and the external state of happiness. There are very legitimate times to feel sad, to even feel depressed, to even feel grief, anger, frustration, every single thing that you can imagine within the spectrum of the human emotional experience is valid and important to our own knowledge of self. Um, 
So I'm definitely not an advocate of doing your best to try to stay positive all the time. Because sometimes that would mean shoving away difficult, painful emotions that are a necessary thing to feel and express. And I just wanted to throw, we don't have to spend too much time on that one because that one is definitely very nuanced for all of us, um, especially where you are in the spectrum of um, emotions. I'm a very feeling-based, very emotional person, but I also have friends that are much more intellectually driven. Not that I don't have that strong intellect as well, but I feel very intensely as I, you can see my physical body expressing it, right? And for a long time, I used to think there was something wrong with this, right? Um, because some people were uncomfortable with my, um, and, and it's like, no, this is just where I am in the spectrum of, of expression. And there's some people that choose to express things or, or I can't, I'm not going to say choose to, it's the way their, their, their chemistry is, their brain is wired, right? We're all these very beautiful, complex um, combinations of all these beautiful things and all of them are, are valid. Now, when we start to express in a way that disrespects or hurts somebody else, that's when we need to really become observant of, well, okay, this is a valid emotion. This is a valid belief system, but it's not okay to infringe on someone else's will or respect. Wow, we're really getting out there with this one. Okay, so we are gonna get into a meditation with this and I will try to guide you into the space of becoming the observer. Um, I mean, why not? We're already in it. So this is another very interesting concept that um, science and spirituality throws around where if we can observe our thoughts, then we are not our brain. We are not our mind. We are something else, right? And, and even, you know, science is trying to pinpoint, but what is that thing that makes us human? It's not in any one particular location in the brain. So where is it? I mean, again, this is based on a belief system. Some would say spirit, some would say it's soul, some would say it's higher consciousness, some would say it's the ghost in the machine, right? But there is an aspect of ourselves when we can see it when we're meditating. We can actually observe our thoughts. If we were our brain, we wouldn't be able to witness it. We wouldn't be able to separate it. So we're sitting in the space of the higher self. I, I don't want to get caught up in, 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 in um, jargon and verbiage. There's different ways to explain it. And I hope everybody's okay with, I'm, I'm very respectful of all belief systems. So I'm not trying to like input, but there is a space where we can sit and observe, observe the thoughts, observe the body, observe the emotions. Um, I like getting there through the awareness of the heart. You know, settle into the heart beyond the thoughts, beyond what's being experienced externally and go deep within. So I'm going to guide you into that space and um, we're going to have fun with this. Um, I'm very, I feel very, and, and a lot of you have expressed this too. I feel very much at peace and a sense of calm when I'm out in nature. And um, the other day I was thinking, I have a, I have a beautiful yard here. Um, I've only been living here a little bit over a year and I still feel like, oh, I need to plant some more native vegetation. I need to do so much more. And it's like, yeah, but you can also just go outside and enjoy what's already here every morning. So I've started that little um, kind of ritual for myself in the morning going and sitting. I know it seems so obvious, right? And, and I, I do it sporadically, you know, I'll take walks around the yard, whatever, but it's just like, no, in the morning, go. Do a few sun salutations, sit and breathe, and just take in the sounds, the birds, even if it's the neighbor talking, right? Or, or the person down the block blowing the lot. Fine, just take it in, be out there in that space, feel the sun on your skin, feel the breeze. You know, I'm at, we're, we're experiencing spring here in, in North Carolina. Um, it's beautiful, like take it all in. Um, find that space of gratitude right now. Right? So there's always those little things. Um, and we did that practice last week where, where you're just finding that little something that brings you right into that, that um, vibration of gratitude. 
So, okay, we've, we've gone all over the charts with this, but at the, the core of it is learning to become the observer and finding that space of peace. So let's play with that in our meditation. Okay, so start with that nice upright spine, the feet grounded to the floor. Now you can either place your hands on your lap or folded, um, just whatever feels comfortable so that you can gently draw your shoulders back instead of slouching forward. And then close your eyes. So we'll start with the very basic cues of bringing ourselves into the space of mindfulness in the present moment. And we'll start first with just being aware of your surroundings. Obviously our eyes are closed, so you're using your other senses to become aware of the temperature of the room that you're in. Become aware of the sounds in the room or maybe immediately outside of the room. And we're not trying to linger on any particular sound, we're just observing. Now start to become aware of simply your body in space. Notice how you're seated. Notice how it feels to have your feet flat on the floor. And as you draw your awareness to your feet, feel a sensation of rooting down, almost as if your feet are magnetized to the floor in a comforting, supportive way. You feel like a tree rooted to this space. And then feel that sensation of grounding, of being rooted in the space and a sense of security and a sense of trust. And feel that sensation of grounding kind of make its way up your legs as you feel a little bit more relaxed in your legs. And then notice the sensation of your hips on your chair. And maybe even connect to feeling the fullness of your hips. Maybe even visualize the bowl of your pelvis, that beautiful shape that houses the majority of our internal organs. And then as you relax into your hips, try to follow the line of your spine from your tailbone up that gentle, natural curvature of your lower back, your mid back, near your ribs, right behind your heart, and all the way up into the base of your neck. And then take your awareness to your ribs, your rib cage as it protects your heart. Feel your heart's space lift upwards slightly and relax your shoulders down just a little bit more. Feel that sensation of relaxation. Your shoulders move all the way down your arms. And as you relax your arms, feel a gentle release out through your fingertips and the palms. Like you are releasing tension from your hand. Notice how you're holding your neck. Try to keep it nice and tall. Travel up into your head, relaxing your jaw, your cheeks, your eyes, your forehead, your ears. Now, as we start to reside in the headspace, we're going to practice trying to stay focused. So we'll stay focused on visualizing the pathway of the breath. So our breath will move in or is moving in and out of the nose, 
try to keep your focus there. But as we were discussing before, our mind changes, our mind fluctuates, and even though we're trying to focus and control the thoughts in the mind through the focus of the breath, other thoughts might jump in. That's okay, but just try to reroute your focus back to the breath. Allowing your thoughts just to kind of float through your mind like clouds in the sky, not paying any particular attention to any one thought or other. No matter how important the mind tries to convince you that that thought is, just let it float through with a sense of indifference. Remember, this is that mindfulness training that we were talking about. Recognizing that the mind will fluctuate, but there's always that deeper space of peace within. So we are observing the thoughts. The mind wants to be the center of attention, but we are not our thoughts. They are an aspect of who we are, but they are not the totality of who they are. They are not the driver of our being. There is something greater, there's something beyond the mind that is ultimately in control. And we can find peace in that knowledge. And as we settle even deeper into the present moment, even deeper into this space of focus, start to settle like you are shifting your consciousness from the mind into the heart. And settle into that soft, serene, sacred space of unconditional love. And maybe as soon as you draw your awareness there, you immediately can touch on that peace within. And maybe not, and that's okay. Just, just know and trust that it is there. And then continue to settle into that awareness, keeping your focus on the breath, but keeping your consciousness in that space of peace. And settle here for just a few more moments, doing your best to stay mindful, observant, and present with yourself in this moment. Keeping this awareness, we're going to start to move into belly breathing or deep diaphragmatic breathing. So we're going to try to let the belly expand as you inhale through the nose. And as you release the breath from the body out of the nose, in the exhale, your belly gently contracts back inward. So inhale through the nose and imagine your belly like a balloon inflating with the breath. And then exhale, feel your belly gently draw inward as you release the breath back out of the nose. Keep relaxing into the belly. Keep trying to send that breath as deep into the body as you can. Inhale. Out of the nose, exhale. Inhale through your nose, expanding deep 
taking that deep breath into the lower belly, lower diaphragm, exhale, releasing it all the way back up and out. Inhale. Exhale. Now come back to your natural breathing in and out of the nose. Take a moment to observe, maybe through this space of mindfulness and deep breathing, you can feel that your nervous system has responded by becoming a little bit more calm. And maybe not, you know, sometimes we have days when the nervous system stays more agitated, the mind stays more active, and that's okay too. We can still observe that space. Let's close this meditation by bringing the left hand on the heart and the right hand on top of the left. And feeling the warmth of your hands on your heart center, take a deep inhale through your nose. And gently release that breath out of your mouth. Release your hands down and blink open your eyes. Let's get into some gentle movement. Now, everything that we just went through, through the meditation and the mindfulness practices and connecting to that aspect of the space beyond the mind and the physical body does not stop there, right? We try to carry that on throughout the rest of the day. Um, and, and that's where the real work comes in, right? Because it's easy to connect to a loving space, to a space of connectivity and unity um, when we're feeling great. Um, but what happens when your anger flares up or when somebody really does something disrespectful or harmful or something really challenging comes into your path? Now, like I said before, I don't think that that is a space to ignore the negative emotions, but to also have that different kind of more expanded awareness of, okay, I can experience this. I can create the necessary boundaries and go through the necessary expression, but it can come from a space of compassion and peace, opposed to coming from a space of separation. So that's, that's where the real practices really come in, right? Um, so trying to keep this very positive mindfulness, let's continue the breath and that awareness as we take our gentle movements in the practice. Okay, so um, start with your hands interlaced and press your palms away from you, tuck your chin in, round the spine, push into the space between the shoulder blades, and then gently release the hands down and round yourself all the way back up. Take your arms out to the side, inhale, reach your arms all the way up, 
keep the arms extended and try to lift a little bit taller without shrugging the shoulders. And then exhale, bring your arms all the way back down. Nice, let's do that a couple more times. Inhale, reach the arms up and out, lift. Exhale, lower it down. One more. Inhale, lift it all the way up, reach, get tall. And then we're gonna lower the right hand down and take a lateral stretch over to the left. If that's too much for the shoulder, you can also bend the elbow or take your hand to your hip. Good. Bring it all the way back up. Take your left hand to the outside of your right leg. Your right hand comes behind you. Now you can also grab onto the chair to help to facilitate this twist. But the important thing is to try to keep the lower back tall as you look over that right shoulder. And then keep twisting and see if you can start to lean your right ear towards your right shoulder, gently stretching the left side of your neck. And then gradually pick your head back up, untwist the body back to the center. Good, arms back out to the sides. Inhale, reach it all the way up. Try to lift nice and tall, and then lower your left hand down and reach your right arm over. And then bring it all the way back up. Take your right hand to the outside of your left leg and your left hand behind you and twist. Find the twist first, hold it, and then start to gently take your left ear towards your left shoulder to stretch the right side of the neck. Slowly pick your head back up, untwist the body back to the center. Gently roll your shoulders back. Roll your shoulders forward. Good. Interlace your fingers behind your head. So we're gonna open our elbows out to the side as wide as you can. Try to feel the shoulder blades pull in. And then we're gonna round again. So pull your elbows in, tuck your chin in, and round your upper back as you curl into your chest. Let's do that again. Inhale, come all the way back up. Open the elbows out to the side, reach. Yeah, nice. And then exhale, pull it in and round. Let's do it again. Inhale, all the way up, elbows out, reach. And exhale, pull it in and round. Release your hands down, round it all the way back up. Okay, so we're gonna do the flexion of the spine with our cat cows. So you're gonna take your hands to your knees. Um, do you need the side view again? So stay facing forward. I'll just show you the side view so you can see what's going on with the spine. So hands to your thighs or your knees. Inhale, reach your chest forward, shoulders back. If you can, look up. And even your tailbone is curling back. And then exhale, reverse that movement. So chin in, tailbone tilts towards your face as you round. And we'll do it again. Inhale, open it up, shoulders back, chest up. Exhale, pull it in, round the spine. One more time. Inhale, open and reach. Exhale, pull it in and round. And then gently unravel all the way back up. Good. Okay. 
So you can do this with your hands interlaced under your leg or just lifting and lowering. I'll slow you back a little bit. So focusing on your left leg, make sure the spine stays upright. We've got a bit of engagement in the lower belly to support the movement. We'll lift that left knee up, flex the foot, and lower back down. Now, if you can't lift it all the way off the floor, maybe just try to lift the knee a little bit. Let's do it again. Lift it up, lower down. Good. Lift. And lower. And if you want an added challenge, you can also do this with a straight leg. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. One more time. Lift it up and take it down. Good. Other side. Now, the challenge again is to make sure you're not slouching as you're doing it. Right, try to keep it upright. We'll go over to that right leg. Keep the belly nice and engaged. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. Lift, lower. Two more, pull it up. Lower down, last one, lift, and lower. Excellent. Feel free to kind of shake it out a little bit. Now we're going to take a soft passive forward fold here. So we're going to start to take our feet a little bit further apart. And that forward fold can look like this. Maybe it's comfortable for you to come a little further down. Maybe you're comfortable in a complete forward fold, just kind of hanging over the support of the legs. But go to where it feels comfortable for your spine. So it's just a gentle forward fold and we'll hold it there. Hold it there. Try to relax so that you can take deep breaths. Good, see if you can let go of the neck, let go of the shoulders. Just hang and breathe. See if you can imagine the breath in your lower back as you're holding that forward fold. And then with the engagement of the core, you can also use your hands as assist, an assist. You can slowly bring it all the way back Excellent. Let's take the left leg and open it out to the side. So you're as close to a 90 degree angle as you can take. Bring your left forearm onto your left quadricep and reach your right arm over your ear. As always, you can bend the elbow. You can also take your hand to your hip if that's creating strain in the neck or shoulder. Now try to really lengthen through the side and even Open that right shoulder a little bit more towards the ceiling. We're still trying to focus on the breath. Good. Slowly take it all the way back up. Bring the left knee in. Open the right leg out to the other direction. Keep that 90 degrees. Bring the right forearm to your right quadricep and reach the left arm over your ear. Opening through that left side of the body as you stretch, pushing down through the hip as you reach through the top of the head and the fingertips. And then gently bring it all the way back up. Face forward. Okay, couple options here. So you can do this by crossing your left ankle over the right or over the shin or over the knee. And then from here, supporting yourself on your right hand, use your left hand 
to gently apply pressure to the left thigh. So make sure you're not pushing the knee down, opening from the hip as you gently press down. Now, if it doesn't feel comfortable to bring the ankle on top of the knee, it'll look a little bit more like something like this. And you can lean back a little bit to get that opening through the hip there. So hold it wherever you're at. Even lean to the opposite side so you can get a little bit more of that stretch from the hip to the low back. Good. And then release it down and switch sides. It can be the right ankle over the left ankle or shin, or that right ankle comes right on top of the left knee. Supporting yourself on your left hand, use your right hand to gently press the right thigh open. And then let's relax it and lower that foot down. Okay. So now we're gonna do a modified warrior one. So you're gonna open that left knee out to the side again. You can choose to stay like this, or maybe you can start to extend that right leg back. And then from here, you face the left knee and reach the arms up. As always, you can bend the elbows or take your hands to your hips, but try to keep rotating towards that right, uh, towards that left leg. Excellent. Lower your hands down, drag that right leg back in, stay facing the side. Now you're gonna bring your chest to face the right knee. So now you're kind of making a little bit of a torque through the hips and then extend the arms straight out and just hold it here. So it's a little bit of a twist. And then let's shift our gaze over towards that left hand. Good, and then relax the arms back down, excellent. Take that left leg forward, and then open the right leg out to the side. Scoot a little bit closer up onto the edge of the chair. You can stay like this, or start extending that left leg back. Try to get the left hip to rotate towards the right leg, and then reach your arms up. Yes. Okay, now let's rotate to face forward again. Oh, we're gonna keep it open but we're dragging that back leg in. So we're going back into that 90 degree angle, but the chest is gonna face forward. So you wanna think of your right knee pointing to the side while your right hip is pointing forward. Arms out to the side, and then gaze over towards that right hand. Shift your gaze forward first, then release the arms down, and take that leg forward. Take your arms directly out in front of you. Keep the elbows high, bring your palms to your shoulders. Keep the elbows where they are and just reach the hands back out. Let's do it a couple more times. Palms to the shoulders. Press it away. Try to keep the elbows in. Two more, palms to the shoulders. Good. Press it away. One more, palms to the shoulders. And press it away. And release it down. Good, maybe shake it out a little bit. Excellent. So one more round of those little cat cows. 
and then we'll close with a short little final breathing meditation. So hands to the hip thighs, inhale, chest forward, shoulders back. Exhale, chin in and round. Inhale, chest forward, shoulders back. Exhale, chin in and round. One more. Inhale, open it up as you reach. Exhale, pull it in and round. And then slowly bring it all the way back up. Okay. Again, either hands can be on your lap or stacked on top of each other. And honestly, whatever position is comfortable for you, as long as the shoulders can stay drawn back and down. Close your eyes. Settle back into the awareness of the present moment. Take a deep inhale through your nose. Out of the nose, exhale. Appreciating the gift of that breath, inhale through the nose. Out of the nose, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more deep inhale. And exhale. Settle back into your natural breath. Come back into that space of observing the thoughts from the space of the compassion of the heart, and the connection to that space of love, of unity, of peace. Invite it in, allow it to fill you, to surround you. knowing that this is your natural state of being, that all of the other fluctuations are external to the state of peace. Place your left hand on your heart and your right hand on top of the left. Let's take a deep heart-centered breath. Inhale through the nose. Exhale as you release it out of your mouth. <sighs> Lower your hands down and gently blink open your 